Please. I had a really, really loud night last night. I went to a band and my ears are ringing. Oh, yeah, that happens to me when I get into, like, a car with a doof doof stereo. I heard that the little headphones that you stick into your ears are really bad for them. Really? Like, really bad. And I listen to mine so loud. But, I mean, not only music is bad for you, I mean, like, just also planes and traffic and like for people who live in the city where it's really noisy. I think just in general today's world is really harsh on our ears. Beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> We invited a sound specialist up to our studio. How do we hear sound? It's really a movement of energy through the air, much like the waves that you would see on the, in the sea. The sound is created by, say, one of us talking. That sound travels to our ear. It hits our eardrum. That vibrates three little bones. And from there, that energy is transferred into a uh, little device called the cochlea, which is really just like a microphone. And it converts that energy to nerve energy it's then transported to the brain through our um, nerves and we experience the sensation of hearing. At what point does the volume of sound become harmful to your hearing? We are all different, we have individual sensitivities, but if you're in a factory with an average level of 85 dB over 8 hours, that is the maximum you're permitted in that factory and that will be the same if you were in a band too. So what does dB mean? dB is, is, it means decibel. It was originally developed by Graham Bell and hence the name. And it's a measure of sound intensity and sound pressure. In other words, how loud something is. Could you give us some examples of how loud some things are in decibels? Well, of course it depends how close you are to them. Say, like, you're standing under a jet engine. That would be up at around about 140 decibels. That will split your ears in two. It will cause instant permanent damage. Take a jackhammer that's operating outside your place. That could be up to 100 decibels. A very noisy band can average about 96 decibels. It's not only the loudness, it's how long we're exposed. Let's find out just how noisy our world is. Well, here we have a sound level meter, and as you can see, it's reading the actual sound that we've got at the same time. So would you like to take this meter and go and find uh, how loud various things are? Yeah, sure. I'll be back in a bit. See you later. The hissing brakes got it up to about 90 decibels, which is getting closer to the uh, ear damaging range. This is a noise dose badge, and it's for measuring the amount of personal noise we would receive, whether we are, uh, say, in a workplace or in a school classroom. Now, this has got a sleep function on them. Oh, that, that feels and pretty that, good. And that, that actually that activates it, and then I can turn it on. This is, in fact, recording all the sound that he will be receiving at his ear. Hey, look. I've got one too. So should we go record some sounds? Why not? That was good. Oh well, there we go. When the truck pulled away, it went up to 91 decibels. That's impressive. Look into my nipple. And now I'm going to cross. Whenever I go to a concert, Stuart, I get a, a ringing sound in my ears. What's going on there? You get a temporary hearing loss, so you won't hear as well after a concert and your ears will feel a little bit strange too. And then, provided you have enough rest, of course, your ears will largely return to where they were before. However, if you uh, go to a concert every night or into loud music every night, your ears don't get a chance to recover. Of course, if it's so terribly loud, and we're getting sort of well above the 100 decibel range here. You will cause instant damage. Your ears can only take so much. So even if it's at a low volume, it'd still be quite damaging? Yes, absolutely. So listening to, say, your iPod with headphones would be quite harmful to your ears? Oh, yes. Uh, I think I have very serious concern about how loud some people listen to their headphones. Is there any other factors that can affect hearing loss, such as pitch, for instance? Is a low pitch sound more damaging than a high pitch sound? Oh, generally not. We can uh, lose hearing at different frequencies. It can affect how we perceive speech because um, some of the, the sounds that we make are very much dependent on the, the, the frequency of sound. We'll just turn it up a little bit more to see, because we often drive around with this level. It's a 95 decibel. It's good. Let it all out 
<laughs> so unfair. <laughs> Can we stop right there? Why? I sound horrible. No, you don't. You sound normal. I do. Does that what I actually sound like? Yeah. Go to you. <laughs> you were eating a pie the other day. Actually. Oh my oh. god. You just sound normal. <laughs> I sound horrible. <laughs> I sound adorable. You just sound like you. Maybe. Maybe it's the sound guy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that came out at 103 decibels. That is very loud. Is that loud? Oh, yes. Right, okay. When you're um, playing, is that the sort of level that you would be subject to? Uh, probably louder than that, most of the time, yeah. You notice there's a change in your hearing as a result of maybe being subject to a lot of loud sound? Uh, yes, definitely, um, yeah, ringing in the ears. Your ears may be telling you something, the fact that uh, they're probably getting a bit of a battering. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and what do you think you can do about it? Uh, well, I try to position myself sort of away from, you know, loud speakers right in my ear, or I try to just make sure that the monitors are at the right level so that it's not too loud on stage, but uh, it's actually quite hard to pitch the note on the trumpet while wearing earplugs, so I can't. All I can do is have a short career and uh, retire early. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think in 10 to 20 years, Stuart, Toby will be deaf? Well, th this is of course a uh, risk for people with, um, you know, that are musicians. I think it's a serious occupational hazard. When you're practicing, that is the key thing here, is to play as quietly as you possibly can, and perhaps play in shorter periods rather than sort of one long practice session. I found out why we sound so bad. Why? Because when you talk, you hear yourself in two different ways. You hear yourself in your inner ear, you hear your voice bouncing around in your head and stuff. And you hear yourself in your outer ear, which is like how everyone else hears you. So we kind of sound a bit different than we do in real life. And when recordings record you, they only hear what everyone else hears. So that's how everyone hears us except us. <laughs> At least we don't sound like the boys. That's true. <clears throat> You do, you concur. I concur. You always concur. I just want to make you happy, goddammit. Okay, well, let's get going. I'm so glad. Oh, no. This is your badge which you wore now. What we can do is put it in here and I can download the data then transfer it to the computer. We've got a graph of just what you were doing during the day. It's uh, what we call a time history. From about 12 to about 3 o'clock you were in a very quiet environment. Yeah, probably. I went to the library. <laughs> OK, <laughs> that's what we would expect. Yeah. Obviously a quiet reading room of some sort. But suddenly you're into the noise again. Yeah. I Is had a um, meeting, a theatre group, so we were quite noisy and yes, stuff. Yes, I see. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what happened here? There's a very large peak. Um, <laughs> well, everyone kept asking me what the badge was and stuff, and I just got so frustrated that I yelled into it really loud. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you can see, your voice is pretty loud. Yeah. And you're very close to the mic, but you went up to well over 100 yeah. dB. So what can we do to help prevent hearing loss? Be careful and be aware. If you work in a noisy environment during the day, then your ears need some rest. And uh, if you decide to go out clubbing and partying, your ears do not switch off like your eyes. You can't close them. Next time you're in a vehicle, <laughs> just think about your ears a little. Think about the consequences. Think about how they feel. That's me over and out. Do you know, the coolest thing that I found out today was that if you're wearing a really weird looking thing on your coat, everyone comments on it. It's yeah. so annoying. He was like, ooh, what's that? And I got so annoyed at one point that I just grabbed it and I was like, ah, I yelled into it. I also thought it was weird how you can lose hearing in 
a certain frequency of your ear. It's not just a, a blanket hearing loss. It's like you might lose just the low frequency or the high frequency hearing. Yeah, one interesting thing I found out was that you, you know, if your eyes are tired, you can just close them and rest them, but you can't really close your ears. Should we try to rest our ears? Yeah. We'll give it a go. Okay. okay. Hey, scribes of bros. <laughs> they were good though. <laughs> They're really cool. <laughs> they were really cool. Oh. Well, there you go then. Yes, there's no hope for our ears. <laughs>